Israel and Lebanon held unprecedented talks to settle a maritime border dispute with an aim to clear the way for hydrocarbon exploration. The two countries, which are technically still at war, met at the headquarters of the UN peacekeeping forces in the Lebanese border town of Nakura. The Nakura talks, as they are being called, focus exclusively on the disputed sea frontier, coming at a sensitive time as Lebanon has been battered by multiple crises and is hoping to continue exploring for oil and gas in a part of the Mediterranean also claimed by Israel. The talks were mediated by the U.S. envoy to Algeria, John Descroche. Both the countries did not have diplomatic relations. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu's close aide is also a part of those talks, while the Lebanese delegation comprises army officers, an oil official and a maritime border law expert. These negotiations coming weeks after Bahrain and the UAE became the third and the fourth Arab nations to establish ties with Israel. And the CNN's uh, former Beirut bureau chief, uh, Brent Sadler, is now joining us live for more on that. Uh, good evening, Brent. First up, how hopeful are you that these talks uh, will yield concrete results? The first round has ended. The second round is slated for the uh, 28th of October. The first round lasted for just over an hour. Well, first of all, finding solutions and concrete results in Lebanon is extremely difficult at the best of times, let alone now when the country is on the verge of economic collapse. But let's put it into perspective. These are important, significant talks. Just lasted less, less than an hour. So really it was more protocol than it was substance. But the fact that it's happened, uh, it's taken uh, almost a decade, most of a decade of US efforts behind the scenes to try to get these talks for the gas reserves offshore in the Mediterranean around a table. Uh, but even before they got together, there was a complaint from the Hezbollah side and its political ally, the Amal Shiite movement, complaining about the makeup of the delegation from the Lebanese side. They wanted it to be all military representatives, no political. Why? Because no one here is talking about any form of taking steps towards normalization of relations between Israel and Lebanon, apropos what happened between the UAE and Bahrain in recent months. So very different cases around the table and a very difficult table around which to get any agreement about anything. So it's just the stuff. Right. Elaborate for us uh, how significant these talks really are for Lebanon coming at a time when it is battered by multiple crises. That's a very good point. For Lebanon, it's crucial. Uh, Hezbollah's uh, placement within the government of Lebanon over the past year has been instrumental in changing the dynamics on the ground because Hezbollah is being seen as partly responsible, as influential in government because of what's happened there. The August the 2nd nuclear scale explosion, was it an accident? Was it an act of sabotage? Still very unclear although uh, opinion and investigation airs on the side of an accidental cause behind that explosion. But Hezbollah is under pressure locally and regionally. And if it had stopped these protocol talks getting underway in the first place today, that would have been a negative for Hezbollah. But at the same time, as one of their political allies in the media said, this is an unprecedented moment of weakness for Lebanon as a nation to be negotiating with a far more powerful neighbor, Israel, over such an important and lucrative uh, compromise as a deal over energy in the Mediterranean. Worth to Lebanon could be $6 billion a year in revenue from gas supplies. So we're not talking small amounts of money here. And in Lebanese terms, that's absolutely critical. Indeed. Uh Brent Sattler, thanks very much for joining us with those perspectives.